What's up guys? I know it's uh, it's been a while, but uh, it's just kind of been body work and blocking and more blocking and then more blocking and then primering and then blocking again. So that's pretty much what I've been up to. So let's uh, let's take a look at what I've gotten done so far. All right, between the metal work and some filler, I was able to get this hood pretty straight. It's a uh, night and day difference from when it started out. We had that huge crease in the middle and just dents all over the hood. It resembled much of what the roof here does. Just tons and tons of dents, probably hail damage. That's basically what the hood looked like. We've got it straight, reasonably, actually very straight to be honest. And the trickiest part is this curve around here needed a lot of work. Um, got it in primer, still saw a few little areas that weren't so, weren't so flat. So went ahead and worked that back into what I'm hoping is flat once I lay down this second coat of primer. Pardon the mess here, but when it comes to mixing my paint and hardener and reducer, I like to do it on aluminum foil. I don't have a fancy system, you know, it's, uh, I don't, it's not like I have a paint booth or anything like that. Uh, just at home stuff here. I uh, know this is not sponsored by Wanda. I just, I've used that primer in the past as far of a, as far as like a, a filler primer, it does really well. Um, but I do it on aluminum foil. Everything, things are going to drip. Things are going to go places. And then once I'm done, just wrap it all up and throw it in the trash. So when it comes to dialing in uh, the bodywork, you can see I've got a bit of an issue right in here. Um, I like to use this uh, Focus SEM guide coat in black. Um, I suppose you could just use black spray paint. I don't know, but you just kind of spritz it on. It'll give you a good indication of your low spots and your high spots and whatnot, so uh, you just hit that with the blocks that you use. Again, not <laughs> SEM, uh, is, it, this is not an ad, uh, it's just one I use, I like to use. And then you hit that with the Dura blocks. again, not an ad, and you get, what you get in the end is you get to see the low spots, the spots that are still black are the spots that are a little low. Uh, I didn't go all the way out to here. This is actually pretty good, uh, pretty decent, so I'm not worried about that. I'm just dialing in this area here where you can see got a little body filler there. That's a high spot, knock it down. And then you can see where uh, the dolly work that I did uh, wasn't perfect. So I got bare metal there. Um, but it's always, like it's, it's kind of hard to tell with dolly work because you're you know eyeballing a lot of stuff. Uh, you just kind of get it into the general region and then just kind of do a skim coat of filler and then pretty much get it as straight as you can and then build it up with um, filler and then high build primer. So this area is a little high. I'm going to knock it down a little bit with a little bit of hammer and dolly work. And then you can see the spot next to it here is a little low. That spot's a little low, a little low, low, low. Just kind of put a little tiny skim coat of filler over those, and then we can really get this, this area straight. This is where it gets tricky, is on these, these curves like this. Because that curve, you know, it's, it just makes things a little more difficult. The flat areas are much easier to deal with. But we're getting there. We're getting really close. This is, this is really not that bad. Uh, just a little bit low, fill that in, and then we'll be good. I should add, I am by no means whatsoever a professional body person. Those, those guys have skills that 
I, I do not and probably will never have. But this is the stuff that's always worked for me. These techniques have always worked for me. Um, those, those body guys that are good at their job and know what they're doing, uh, I envy that. And uh, they've got a, a special skill set. But for the amateur guy, this, this kind of stuff uh, works well. I've, I've found. Alrighty, getting ready to lay some primer down on both the grill and the lower valance. They both have primer on the underside of them. I've got the both fenders straight, or pretty straight. We'll find out when we do the filler primer on them and then guide coat and then sand those. It looks like there's a ton of body filler on there. That's not, it's a skim coat. I, I worked it in with a hammer and dolly and then got it as, as flat as I could and then just skim coated it with filler so it's really not much thicker than the thickness of a credit card maybe in a few spots slightly thicker than that I did a lot of this work with uh, with this hammer actually a Martin Martin hammer I was turned on to Martin body hammers uh, by a body guy that really knows his stuff and is really good he says they make the best hammers. I, this is not an ad, I promise. They're not paying me to say that. I paid, that was actually pretty expensive. Made in the USA, uh, nice hammer though, because before I was just using like these import cheaper type hammers and going with a quality hammer really actually kind of made, it did make a difference in how, in how, it, to, how it is to work with and everything like that. Um, Plus, it's, a, it's an heirloom thing, too. I mean, that thing's going to outlive me for sure. I uh, highly doubt that will. Alrighty, got the fender shot and primer. And they came out a lot better than I imagined they would. Of course, there's a few little areas that me as an amateur body man, uh, you know, I didn't catch before I shot the primer. But it's filler primer, and that's what that's for. Not a big deal. I sprayed down some guide coat, letting that dry right now. And then uh, I'm going to block it and see the little areas that will pop up that I may have missed or may need some attention. And then work from there. But other than that, they're looking pretty good. Especially considering how they looked when I started. They, they were both pretty rough. That's the thing about these old trucks, especially these farm-used trucks. They, they were seen as farm implements more than they were uh, vehicles that you would take really good care of. Mechanically, they were well taken care of, but uh, yeah, they got it used and abused. All right, so I blocked this area and sanded some areas, and uh, you can see how the guide coat works. The Once you sand it, and you sand down to the primer, and then the guide coat leaves areas, points out areas that you may have missed. And then once you address those areas, you're going to just guide coat it again, try it again, and then see how it looks from there. A lot of you body guys already know this stuff, but for those that don't, it's pretty cool. All right, with the help of the guide coat, I'm ready to, uh, well, I'm going to end up getting the rest of this guide coat off, but I got the area flat where that was the, uh, that needed the most work. Still got a little bit of work down here to do, and then I'm going to reshoot the thing in filler primer. And I'm not worried about getting this thing perfectly straight. I think I've said it before that this is a shop truck, not a show truck. And if I get this thing absolutely perfect and put 20 hours into each panel and whatnot, I'm not going to use it as a shop truck. I'm going to be paranoid about <laughs> denting it or scratching it. So I, I'm not doing any fake patina, but I'm just not going through and making everything laser straight. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go that deep into it. Uh, and then I'll be nervous if, uh, you know, my son rides his bike near it or something like that. That's not what we're doing here. So, uh, yeah, we're just getting things straightened and to where it's not um, obviously obvious body work. You know, on like you've seen the you've seen those vehicles where it was just uh, bad filler work, and you can see the you know the body filler lines and everything like that, and. Uh, we're just getting that out of it. Just trying to make it where it's not obvious that there's been filler applied to these panels. That's all I'm really concerned about. I have brought the inner fenders, the battery tray, the ECU holder bracket thingy, and the ECU itself inside to cure because I um, don't want body filler dust sitting on it. But they turned out really good. 
and I'm really happy with them. Both of these inner fenders needed a lot of work. There was a lot of dents, a lot of holes from where, the, well, you know, the the uh, wire loom and all the original stuff that, you know, they drill a hole and then put the little plug in there, stuff like that. So I filled all those holes and put a little filler on it and then painted it and then clear coated it and they are done. Turned out really nice. There's also a big rust hole right there. I patched all that in, got that taken care of. So these are ready. Painted in primer, the lower valance. Painted in primer on one side and then it's got the rubberized bed liner on the other underside. Same goes with the fenders. We've got rubberized uh, bed liner on the inside of those as well as the inner fenders have that on the inside. The hood turned out really good, especially compared to what I started with, with that huge crease in the center. Got that reinforced on the back side, got everything straight, and it, it looks really, really good compared to what we started with. This is my first time really doing any kind of like in-depth body work like this. Uh, so it's been a learning experience so far, but I'm learning. I realize that it's a, a practice of patience and just doing the same thing over and over and getting covered in filler dust. But the results are worth it. If you live in the Midwest, you probably know that since probably the second week of June into we're going into the second week of July, it's been sitting around 105, 110 uh, uh, heat index with around 80% relative humidity. We had dew points in the 80s. Uh, it's been a sticky mess out here, but I suppose that's just part of it. Uh, I know that I said I'm not gonna make the truck laser straight and absolutely perfect, but uh, as I was going into it, uh, that was the idea that I was just gonna, you know, strip it down, throw some filler on, and then throw some filler primer on, and then paint, right? Well, you know, as further I go into it, I keep thinking, oh, I'm already here, I'm already doing the work, might as well do it right, because, uh, you know, going into it with an idea of just a quick paint job, you know, the more, you know, that I would look at it and things, I'd probably say that I wish I did it right while I was there doing the work. So that's what's happening. It's not going to be absolutely perfect. Things like the dents and the, uh, the wheel wells, the top part of the wheel wells on the bed and stuff, I'm not going to, I'm not going to fix those because then I'm not going to haul anything, right? So uh, those are staying. Um, some of the little dents in and around the uh, inside of the, the, the bed and stuff like that. I'm not, I'm not going to worry about any of that stuff. As far as the outside goes, yeah, we're getting that pretty straight. I am going to get the seat upholstered. Uh, I keep, I, I haven't sent that out yet. I, that's the one thing on this truck that I'm not gonna do. I'm not, I, had, I know that I would end up screwing that up. I haven't definitely nailed down a color, but right now, and what has been the color that I've stuck with for probably the past month is uh, the, the um, Wimbledon white over Rangoon red. Ford colors. I know it's not a 61 color. I don't believe it's a 61 color, but uh, it was on the 62 and 63 unibodies, I believe. I'm not 100% sure on that. But anyways, that's the color. I, I really like that color combo. I thought about the turquoise, but I don't know. Something about the... Uh, I'm not a red guy. I, I don't really like red, but Rangoon red has kind of this uh, orangey kind of thing to it. It's, it's a neat a neat red to me, and with the two-tone with the Wimbledon white, I think it looks really, really classy. Uh, I've always, always liked that color combo. I know the patina look was kind of cool. A lot, of, uh, you know, a lot of you guys liked it, and, and were a little upset that that I uh, got rid of the. I was getting rid of the patina, uh, but I drove that thing for what a year and a half, two years with the patina, and it was cool for a while. And then I just kind of, I was kind of over it. And as well as it ran and drove, I wanted it to look just as good as it ran and drove. So that is why she's getting painted. We're getting really close to 5,000 subscribers. Never thought I would be close to 5,000 subscribers. Guys, you are awesome. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'm happy to have you along and, and, uh, and on this adventure. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one.